Okay, here we are in uh, actually uh, Ollie's garden this week. Uh, and uh, this is following on in the uh, Chew the Fat series. I, um, I Chew the Fat 01. Um, actually, my children watched it. I think your mum watched it. Oh, we uh, got a few viewers at least. Yeah. Um, so we've decided we're going to carry on. And uh, on this one, we're going to talk. I'm going to try and uh, pick Owl's brains on the topic of. Um, being a team captain, being the, being the coach of, of the team. You know, I was um, drawing on the experience of coaching the, the winning DWF team this year, um, a few times now to the CrossFit European Regionals as, as both our participant and, uh, and, and, uh, and the active coach. So, oh, if you don't mind, that's what we're gonna cover this, this week. Um, let's kick off with really, I suppose, the first um, uh, responsibility for the captain is to to select the team. Any any perspectives there? Um, well, there's a number of options really. Um, you can, you know, you may know your team well enough that you can just hand pick the people that you think are going to do the job for you. Um, you may be scratching around for people. Um, maybe if you're a relatively new box, you might, you know, some people might be a little bit intimidated. Um, might be the first competition they're involved with, so you might have to do some kind of, you know, encouragement there. Uh, and, and trying to highlight the positive outcomes from entering a competition. Um, you may even, we've seen some qualifiers bounted around. Um, so in-house qualifiers, that may be the best way. way. I think we saw a thrash their athletes uh, recently <laughs> yeah, on the, some of the movements to expect to uh, yeah. um, move the so, so, you know, there's a number of ways you can do it um, based upon how uh, you know, young the gym is uh, or you know, how well you know your athletes. There's a number of ways. And when, uh, let's just say, you know, I, I, you know, get someone like yourself will know pretty intimately, you know, the, the community that's at CrossFit Bath. But uh, what, as a general rule, how would you go about selecting the selecting the team? Um, I think for a group of twelve, it's, it's difficult actually. I mean, you know, you, you, your star star names will always come to light. You know, they're obviously going to be givens. Um, but you know, I, I think every gym actually has. Was I one of your star names? That's no, so hard. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't have been. That's awkward. That was, that was, that was a joke. Let, um, yeah, it's, it's, but but every gym has got that kind of that middle tier people that, and, and that is it, it's, it's a massive broad spectrum of those people that you know in the, in that middle tier and how you decipher between those people is difficult. I think you know qualifiers are a you know, in-house qualifiers are are a, a very fair way of doing it. Um, but obviously, with that comes a, a, a lot more logistics. So um, yeah. I guess you know, that's a that's a decision the coach has to make, or the, or the team captain will have to make. Yeah, I suppose it gets interesting where there's a a known strong athlete, but maybe not so um, great for the team cohesion or the the, the balance of uh, you know attributes you need. Yeah. yeah. Should we um, should we move on though to uh, you know so you, you selected a team. Um, and I think actually it's worth saying, if you're, um, you've got the luxury of a very, very big community, there's no reason why it need be just just a single team. And uh, even if teams are entering just for the um, the buzz of the experience, you know, not necessarily the podium place. You know, we, we, we've seen a few teams that are of of that ilk. Um, anything to say now about the actual? Let's let's talk about the qualifiers or you know any 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 workout. Here you go. Welcome to the third member of <laughs> Chew the Fat. Um, yeah, how have you, with you know the experience of say the CrossFit Regionals or DWF, gone about placing the team into a specific workout and actually coaching them through that workout? Um, well, obviously, different workouts are going to play to different people's strengths, so that's obviously something to consider. Um, and it's not always black and white, so that's a difficult thing. Um, I think, in terms of actually approaching the workouts themselves as a coach. A lot of it is is timing and cohesion, um, and it's almost like uh, certainly like a dress rehearsal. Really, going through uh, changeovers, uh, how you jump over a box, how you do that transition, bar handovers, plate changes, all these sort of things are, are things that you have to rehearse. I mean, you, 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 your training is your training. You you can fall back on your fitness. It's those little things that actually make a difference in a team competition and that cohesion. I totally, uh, I mean, just pulling on my own, you know, former experiences in the in the, in the military. I, I couldn't emphasise that enough. You know, it's the uh, obsession with almost the minutiae of what's going on in a 
in, in, in a work pattern. And, and yeah, there you go, word for the day. Uh, if, you, uh, if, if you don't dress rehearse it, you'd be amazed at what small, silly little things can catch you out. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's the point you're making. Um, but just on that as well, though, it's important that if, if you know if things don't go to plan, that you just keep your cool head and and you just move on and continue. Uh, it's quite easy to panic, um, you know, get flustered and, and lose your rhythm. So it's, it's it's just keeping a cool head. If if problems do arise as well, always have a plan B and a plan C and a plan D. I think uh, and um, you know speaking to athletes that have been coached by you are oh, in that context they would say the thing that you've brought as a as a as a great coach as well is just that calm that very calm sort of sense of confidence as well so I, I definitely echo that as well um, cool um, I, I mean anything else would you feel just you should be implied at this point or? I think as 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 we move on to the qualifiers that's gonna help build definitely a sense of, of, of unity um, which is which is crucially important, and, and then obviously progressing onto the final. I think one major emphasis I would put on is just that team togetherness and almost building like a, a, a brotherhood um, and, and just, sisterhood. And sisterhood, of course, um, and, and just all kind of working towards a common goal and, and representing the gym with pride. Um, a lot of gyms are in their infancy. We, you know, majority of us gym owners are probably only five years in, and. Uh, these are the years where we'll build, build a legacy moving forward, um, and we'll look back on these sort of things with, with fond memories. And, and you know, by building that team cohesion and togetherness, that's going to you know carry no, us definitely. forward. Definitely, and I think yeah, it's fair to say you know part of the philosophy of putting Sid together is uh, you know clearly there'll be some teams that are out there to get onto the podium, get to the finals, but uh, it, hopefully it's as much about just the uh, generation of stories, uh, teams you know taking part in it, and just having some fun and banter. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, great stuff. Um, well, if uh, you uh, are enjoying these videos and have added to the uh, viewership of uh, my children and Ollie's mum, then um, you know, maybe send us some ideas for what you'd like us to uh, chew the fat on, um, on next, because uh, we'll run out of ideas pretty soon as well. But uh, thanks for watching, and here's to the next one.